Hey, good morning, Eastern Oregon, and welcome to this February 22nd version of AM Live on EOA. Your connection to Eastern Oregon, and we're on the EOA network, which means that you can find us on any number of platforms. Yeah, lots of them. Spotify, Roku, Facebook, YouTube. What else? Yeah. We have an app that you can download. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of things. Yeah. And all of those things make us unique. I mean, those there isn't anybody else in the area that does that. So, although there are more and more people doing podcasts, like we were talking about, that's kind of yeah. like the rave thing. Yeah, yeah. it's like it, I I don't want uh, it, it, podcasts have been popular for a while. Yeah. It is what it is. It's you know, like I actually appreciate more people doing podcasts in our area because it's more information. It's you know local. what I mean? It's kind yeah. of fun. Yeah. It, there, there's not, there's not anybody doing like um, sports podcasts that are video. Yeah, I wouldn't even call my my stuff a podcast. Really, it's more of a show in my right. eyes. Like it's it's all I, we do release it in podcast form on Spotify, but that's we don't push it mm -hmm. as a podcast. It's no. not like a, we're we're not calling it like the EO Live Sports podcast. Right? No, it's EO Live Sports. It's yeah. Just the, Video, you know, but one one of the things I did notice, we talked about this the other day. Everybody and their dog is a photographer. <laughs> I, I told you I went to that game, yeah, and, and there's five people taking pictures. I remember, like, and I'm not saying I started taking pictures because there's been a lot of people before me taking pictures, but I remember I'd walk into the gym up at LHS and I'd be the only one taking pictures like two or three years ago, right? And now there's five people sitting there taking pictures it's yeah. great. with professional cameras not like kids with their moms can't you know what i right, mean right. it's like people with yeah good professional cameras taking pictures it's crazy yeah but that's good because that just it it stimulates you know more activity it, get, it gets people involved and i, I like competition too so do you think do you think part of that is because the girls, the basketball girls, basketball is just doing well this year, or no, was it? For no, it's a, it's across the board. It? Like okay. it's just more. I, it, it, EOU, yeah, it's even more prevalent. Yeah. Um, this year during football, that they changed the rules for us. I used to be able to go wherever I wanted on the sidelines mm -hmm. at EOU. Right, games. I remember that. Yeah. Now I'm only allowed from the. The I'm not allowed in the box at all with the players. Right. And I used to be able to just go wherever I wanted, and it's because I asked Camp about it, and he said there's so they're they're letting too many people down here. Yeah. There's too many people take going down and taking pictures. Yeah. So, it is what it is. I'm yeah. Not, I'm not going to complain about it. I have fun with it. it I, I did complain to Angie about it a little, but <laughs> <laughs> but it was more of like like I. I need things explained to me to understand them because I, I I was very diligent all the time about not getting in the way, following the rules, and then all of a sudden you just take this access away from me and don't give me an explanation. Right, right. But then once I got the explanation, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. There's a bunch of other people down here that don't know what they're doing. And and part of me wants to say, well, stop give, stop letting them down there. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like. There's no reason to have five people down there taking pictures, but but the, th the funny thing is, is most of them work for you. Yeah, <laughs> right. Most of them work. You know, you know what I mean. Work right. for the sports department. So it is what it is. I mean, it's 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 fun. It it gives me a good idea of like where my, especially like if I'm just looking in this area, it gives me a good idea of where my skills are compared to other people in the area. Yeah. And I'm not saying I'm better or anything. It just gives me an idea of what, because if people are shooting the same game, you can kind of compare. Yeah. The well, light. you do. Yeah, you do really well, man. Yeah. yeah. But that's one of the reasons, kind of, I got out of wedding photography is because it's convoluted. Yeah. Everybody, <laughs> everybody does it. Yeah, and it's even, 
it's even more confusing because it's uh, it's super susceptible to what's faddish. Yeah. Yeah, and so yeah. so yeah, I mean, so you know, I mean, I'm still old school where I want I just I, you start with a good photo, whatever yeah. that might be, you know, and then but but I mean now it's like and part of that is you know girls look better they they look they they feel better about the way they look when it's real high con or it's everything's real light you know it's yeah. and and so you yeah. can't you can't see the imperfections or whatever it might be and so so but for me that's like that's not good photography and it's opposite for me One, the thing that i love the most about sports pictures is is all the foo foo stuff doesn't matter right you know what I mean? It's okay. A black and white is cool. Yes, I like black and white. Everybody yeah. knows that. Right. I post black and white ones all the time. But when it comes straight down to a good sports picture, yeah, the foo foo stuff does. None of that matters. It's it's all about positioning, timing, lighting, and you can you can put any filter you want on it, and it doesn't change the fact that you were in the right place pushing the button at the right, right. time. Well, and it still is. You have good detail. You yeah. have it's in focus. It's you know, I mean, and those, those things are really, I mean, those are for me, the that's most what important makes, part, especially yeah. for sports. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you got a sports photo and you can see the dust coming off of awesome, like a the, slide or, yeah, or whatever. I mean, that detail is like what, that's what makes it. Yeah. I like like basketball ones where you can see the ball flat on the, on the ground or, yeah. and you can see the bumps on the ball. Yeah. But, but and, and yeah, that is kind of hard. You have to, that takes practice to yeah. get that that you got to stay really still for one thing even yeah. if you have your uh setting set to right. to to kind of compensate for that you still can't be moving right. otherwise you you don't have a chance cuz you you'll see like sports pictures where somebody's going up for a layup and the ball in their hands all blurry you know what i mean and that it's like to me if i that automatically gets cold it could be the coolest face in the world and if there's any blur like on movement well I'm pretty much out. Yeah, that's the, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and that's kind of the point of the the point of the photo is you want to capture that moment. Yeah, yeah. So. it's fun though. I've I've grown to enjoy taking pictures. It's it's a lot of work. It, I, I people don't I don't think people understand. Like I'll give I'll give people an idea of this weekend. I I shot on Friday. I shot all day. Saturday I shot all day and evening. I took probably 6,500 pictures in the two days, and that's, you know, rapid fire, you know, just taking pictures, whatever. I probably spent, I don't know, 15 hours calling through those pictures and editing them. So I probably have, just this weekend alone, just taking pictures, I have a full-time job worth of time into, you know, 35, 40 hours yeah. into into two events just doing just doing football. a wrestling tournament and a, yeah. and a basketball game yeah yeah it's a lot of work but it's fun yeah it's not like i dread it like i don't get home and say oh dang it i gotta call these pictures no i i get home and it's like my relax you know because i can do it at home on my laptop yeah. i can just plug my laptop into my tv so i can see the picture real big and then i just call through i'm like oh like that one yeah don't like that one and you can just hit a button on your keyboard and categorize them and then you have them in in you know right different uh different folders or whatever you want to call it groups and then you decide what you want to do with them from there and then i always try to like take my favorite picture and turn it into like a black and white or you know mm -hmm. like or if it's something that really like is like uh instrumental point in the game or something or like there's a lot of emotion i'll turn it into black and white like the my favorite picture that i've ever taken ever is parker robinson in crook county it was his first wrestling match as a mountie and it and and i it's kind of like a side profile of him and it's really dark uh -huh. and, and it's just his face and, the, and you can see the mountie uh singlet and i turned that black and white and it's my it's probably my favorite picture ever so far yeah yeah. No, it's it's rewarding. I you and I talked before. I hate calling through photos because <laughs> I, I don't mind it. Yeah, because I I always like. Well, and part of that goes back to film days. You know when when I would shoot on film, and yeah. it was just 
it was so hard to, I mean, you'd have a, you'd have a photo and they're super close together and it's like, man, I don't know which one of those is better, you know? And so that's, it's the decision process of like, am I throwing away the wrong picture? I haven't spent, I mean, I've culled a few of your photos, like the, a wedding, yeah. but I haven't spent any time outside of that going through other people's pictures. Yeah. Now that might be, well, no, that, well, no. I, okay. So I had Brenna take pictures. Brenna Strand takes pictures for us at the uh, East West game. Yeah. And I don't call her photos. I let yeah. her decide what yeah. she wants to, you know, let her edit everything and then just send them to me. But yeah. I've never really spent a lot. Of, I wonder what that would be like. That might not be as fun. Yeah. Because I kind of tie, like, the me calling the photos to, like, kind of replaying the game. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, if I didn't take the pictures, like, I, I don't How know. How would you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like. I'll go through and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah I, I, it was like two one, you know what I mean? Right, and I right. kind of replay it in my head, so that's probably part of why I enjoy doing it. I don't, I don't know that I'd enjoy like calling uh, some nature photos or something, yeah. <laughs> sitting out there trying to catch a picture of a bird. You know what I mean? I don't right. think I'd like that. Yeah. But, yeah. All right. Well, you want to do sports? Yeah, let's do it. It's a quick right. one today. AM Sports Report brought to you by Buffalo Peak Golf Course. Go out and see Dan and his team. The hours for the pro shop are changing. It's, you know, it's winter time. Um, but it's still a beautiful pro shop, beautiful course. Buffalo Peak. I mean, Dan is doing some cool things. He's part of the Boise Golf Show this couple weeks ago. And um, they were on TV in Boise. Dana was all excited. He was sending me pictures of him in the studio. And he's just doing great things out there for for the county for that course and it's it's quite remarkable buffalo peak golf course meet me at the peak before i go into local sports i want to talk just a second about the this whole uh i want to get everybody's opinion about this debacle when it comes to uh five-year athletes in college um so caitlin clark she's in her fourth year let me let me preface this cheryl swoops who's an all-time great in women's basketball went on a rant about Caitlin Clark when she broke the NCAA record last week. She says, you know, she's in her fifth year, this, that, this, that. Well, she wasn't. Caitlin Clark's in her fourth year. She, but athletes are being able to play a fifth year because of COVID. So that's where I want to ask you guys a question. And, and answer in the comments or send me a message. What do you, uh, what do you, what do you think about this? Do you think, so say, say there's a record, right? Say the all-time leading scorer at, you know, for NCAA is so-and-so, and they did it in four years. Do you think that an athlete should be able to use that fifth year to break that record? Um, I'm, I'm kind of torn on it. I mean, it's, it, it, it is what it is in my eyes. And, and the other thing is, 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 is it fair that those people that are getting five years, it's probably never going to happen again. You know what I mean? Like the chances of, of having five-year athletes, because the reason why it's never happened in it before is because you have four years of eligibility, but with COVID, they changed the rule and let people have a fifth year, like an actual fifth year of playing. And, and that doesn't happen when you redshirt. That doesn't happen when you miss a year. You still only get four years. So, so I mean, is it fair? Do, is, should there be an asterisk in the records? Uh, I don't know. I'm torn on it. It's one of those things where, I don't want to take anything away from anybody. They work hard for what they do, but at the same time, should should a person, you know, who scored two thousand points in you know, one hundred and twenty games, for the record, be the same as a person who scored two thousand points in one hundred and fifty games? Answer that. I mean, it, give me your opinion on it in in the comments. The uh, Grand Boys and Girls Wrestling starts today. They. Uh, they, they, it, the, the girls have 13 girls there. Boys have 12. Um, I think LeGrand boys are going to come home with five state champions. Now, team state championship, is it, it's going to be a stretch for the boys. Um, it, there, a lot of things are going to have to go their way. But for the girls, I think they're going to walk through that tournament. I think you're going to see LeGrand win by probably 70 points in that tournament. They're, they're good. And I, I had no idea that it was running concurrently. I, I don't know where I've been, what rock I've been sleeping under, but it, I'm going to be there tomorrow. I'm going to get there really early, 
and that'll be championship day for both both teams. So I'll be interviewing. I'm gonna sit down with Dustin Azure from EOU, and we're gonna talk some wrestling. I'll get Kalel on for a minute. Hopefully, I get everybody that's in the in the finals too, and and we'll just talk as it, as it goes on. Keep you guys updated what's happening with this these two wrestling teams and how close we are to possibly winning a uh, fourth straight state championship with the boys and the first one for the girls. And it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun. I, I, it, it's crazy. It's 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 basically just three days of nonstop, like eight mats of wrestling. It's, it's nuts. And when I say days, I'm talking like they start at 10 and they end at like 11, 12 o'clock at night. Wow. It's a full day. <clears throat> um, but they didn't get to play as much the COVID year. Um, well, it, it all depends. Some teams played full schedules. Some teams didn't. But, you know, uh, it just depends. Um, but it's still that many games on top of a regular four-year career. Um. EOU men's and women's hoops this weekend. I'm kind of bummed out about that. Uh, it's senior year, and, and a lot of these seniors now, they're in their fifth year. And most of these guys were freshmen when I first started doing this show. And I'm going to miss their senior night. It's kind of it's kind of sad because I'm going to be in Portland, and it's like Preston Chandler. I've been with him ever since he got to EOU. It, this is year five for him. And I've been with him since he was a freshman, and I'm going to miss his senior night. I was kind of thinking about that last night. It's sad for me, but at the same time, it's also my son's senior year, and I need to be there for him as well. So yeah. um, it's, it's going to be tough. They're playing uh, Corbin and Bushnell this weekend. Both teams have already uh, qualified for the CCC tournament. Um, yesterday, I sat down with CCC men's wrestling champ, in the CCC tournament at 125, Hunter Sparks, and runner up at 149, AJ Rockwell. Here's a little bit of that. Let's uh, change change it a little bit and let's talk about like your team. Um, it, if you had to pick one teammate to take with you to an all you can eat buffet, who you, who you bringing? To an all. Yeah. Well, what's the goal? What, eat as much as eat possible. as much as possible. Yeah. You're going to an all-you-can-eat buffet. I think uh, I, I'm going I'm to look at this two different ways. Yeah. It's either, one, I'm taking Darian or Jay, because yeah, they, they can put food yeah. down. Uh, I mean, Jay, I don't know if you saw, he did the Blazing Wings Challenge. Did he? When they were in Arizona, and I, he crushed it. Oh, I'm sure. So that'd be, my sec, that'd be one of my choices. My second choice would probably be Zach. Um, the other 125. Because he cut a lot of weight. Give me him the day after his last weigh-in. Oh, and just and I think I think he's gonna. I think he can do some damage. What about you after after cutting weight? Like, uh, okay, after nationals, you don't have to worry about cutting weight anymore. Yeah, right. What? It's liquids for me. I I don't get too hungry. I mean, I'll I'll enjoy like a steak or a burger, but I mean, I'll put down some chocolate milk. Just say you've had a really hard like weight cut, like you you've gone through some hard weight yeah. cuts. What outside? You know, you said that uh, chicken fried steak's your favorite meal, but what what what's what do you after a really hard weight cut? Yeah. What's mom or dad or girlfriend make that you just you're just oh. like oh dude I gotta have it. Um. So it was, this goes about all the way back into high school, but we had this wrestler mom. She made a breakfast casserole. Oh yeah. And so it was like eggs. Um, biscuits and gravy with sausage and that was the thing I wanted the most immediately after a hard weight cut yeah and that was that was the thing right there. that's awesome I was a senior in high school and I was thinking about coming to wrestle at you why should I why shouldn't you is should be the question um, but uh, the the guys they're they're quality people the the coaches quality people we got quality wrestling quality people and we got a good facility, we have good resources, and if you want your experience in college and in, on, on the wrestling mat to be a little more personal, a little more intimate, like you, you're getting attention every single day, yeah. and that's the best way to grow, then you, you come to Eastern. Love it. Eastern Oregon, he's EOU wrestler, and second place at, at, in the very tough CCC national qualifier, AJ Rockwell, I'm Dodzy. AJ, I appreciate you. All right, thank you. AM Sports Report brought to you by Buffalo Peak. Out in Union, take the Union Highway, go left, go up the hill, meet me at the peak. Um, Bud, another thing, do I 
do a lot of Photoshop on my pictures. No, I, I really don't do a lot to my pictures, to be honest with you. I Once I call them, I'll make sure that the exposure is good. And then every once in a while, I'll add some clarity, like maybe just a little bit. But that's really it. I, I'll crop. Yeah. If I, if I have a shot that's a little off center, I'll crop it and get it centered. But no, I don't photo. I've, I've never used Photoshop for one thing. And, and I don't really do a lot to my pictures. I, I, I feel like I like that pure, pure look. And if it's a good picture and it's well lit, I mean, most of, there, there's a lot of times where I don't even touch it. All I do is crop it and call it good. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so my opinion on the records is, is that, is that, yeah, I don't know how a five year, I don't know how, how that's fair. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, cause, cause if you, if you play more games, then you certainly have the ability to accumulate more points. I right. Mean, I guess it kind of depends on the record. Yeah. But, well, what, but what if you're a five year kid? Like I'll give you an example. Max, Max is a five year dude. Okay. He only played four or five games his fifth year before he got hurt. Right. But he, he broke the EOU scoring record in his fourth year. Right. And, and was, went over 2,000 in his fourth year. Well, and so but then he is that's a five-year dude. So right, how but, do you... Right. But I mean, but so maybe that's how you... It's whatever you accumulate in the first five years or first four years yeah. or maybe the best four years. I don't know. But, the, but, the, but I, mean, I, I mean, I can see why... Somebody who has had a long-standing four-year record would be unhappy if someone literally was playing. Yeah, of course they have the ability to break the record. Right. They're playing more games, you know. Right. So well, this the, Caitlin Clark did it in four years. She's only in her fourth year, right? She, yeah, and, the, and the reason why it was brought up is because Cheryl Swoops, who's a, a, I mean, she's one of the goats of women's basketball. Yeah, she went off on social media about about how Caitlin Clark should it should it's not the same. That she's in her fifth year, da 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 da. But she was wrong. Bro but she broke it in the fourth year. She broke it. No, this is only her fourth year of playing. Oh, I see. Like Kate, uh, Cheryl Swoops was just wrong. And that's does what he have, it up. does she have another year of eligibility after this? She does, but I doubt she comes back. Yeah, I mean, she's going to go the. She, why was she? She already has the record. You know what I mean? Right. Like she, right. she's she still played less games than Kelsey Plum, Plum who who is the record that she broke. Okay. You know what I mean? She still hasn't even played as many games as her or taken as many shots. Yeah, so you're, so you're right. I mean, that not a lot of room to complain there. Yeah, it was just, it, it's just one of those things where I've been thinking about it uh, because there, it's going to be happening the next couple of years. It's, it's just because we're right at that edge of COVID right. where people got an extra year of eligibility and, and you're going to see some records that might get set that will never get touched. Because you'll never see somebody play that amount of games ever again. Yeah. Interesting dilemma. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's kind of it? like the, one of those unintended consequences of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it puts people in a strange position, too. Yeah. Um, Todd says Swoops was way off base. Yeah, <laughs> she was. She, she looked like an idiot. I hate to say it, but Cheryl Swoops is one of the greatest female basketball players ever, and she looked like an idiot. Like a complete idiot. Like she did not know what was going on at all. Like, and, and, and had no basis for it. I think it's like, I, and I don't, in women's basketball, it's, it's a little different than men's basketball. I feel like there's like a, a line and I don't know what it is. It might be political, but there's just hate there. You know what I mean? And it, it, it's weird. Like, I don't know if it's like age or if it's like a political line or what it is, but it was almost like Swoops hated her. And, and, mm. and she didn't, Caitlin Clark's never done anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't think it's a racial thing. Although Swoop says black, Caitlin Clark's white. I don't think it has anything to do with that at all. Um, because she was defending Kelsey Plum, who's also white. You know what I mean? It's not, it, it wasn't a black and white thing. I think it, it's either an age or a political thing. I think it, that's the only thing I can think of. I saw the other day, the three point, contest between Steph Curry and, and did Sabrina. You yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That was and she she didn't lose by much. No. Three. She, yeah. Yeah. She's good. She, yeah. she 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 made more threes than the than Dame who won the three point contest. Really? She made, she had more points than Well Dame. and she shot from the men's three point line yeah. too. Right. Yeah, but she used the women's ball. 
Oh, she didn't use the same oh, ball. Oh, that was one of the questions they were talking about. They're like, oh, we want it exactly even. Well, it's not exactly even if you're shooting a different size ball. Huh. And she said that, and she's like, I'm going to use the women's ball. That's what we use. Huh. How much, but she shot from the same distance. How much difference it's is It's quite there? a bit smaller when it's in your hands. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, if you, if you hold a men's ball and then you hold a women's ball, you can definitely feel the difference. There's huh. no doubt. Yeah, it's quite a bit smaller. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. But I, she killed it, Sabrina. That, that's a U. That's an Oregon girl too. She played at U of O. Huh. Um, she, uh, she's, she's good. And Caitlin Clark's like that. Caitlin Clark is legit shooter. Yeah. Like she broke the all-time scoring record from the logo, which is like ten feet away from the three-point. Right. Uh, line. It was crazy. Wow. Yeah. All right, well, hey, let's take a look at outside. It was frosty this morning when we got ready to come. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Come to work. It was, uh, yeah, I mean. It's going to be uh, in the 50s all the rest of the week, though. The, the, it was black ice. I mean, when I, you know, when I came in at, from Island City into town in the shady areas, that was it I was hope it's slick. not like that t tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Let's take a look at the weather, see what that's going to be like. So up to 50 today, 51, 30 yeah. tonight, and then it looks like it's going to be yeah, I, damn near 60 on Saturday. Yeah, look at Jeez. the weather. The weather is going to be pretty this weekend, which is nice. Wow. Mostly sunny tomorrow and Saturday. I'm yep. down with that, even though I'm going to be inside all day. That's right. Both well, hopefully, days. hopefully it'll be good traveling weather. I right? think it is. I mean. Uh, middle to end of February, I don't think you can ask for much better than this. <laughs> I yeah. mean, this is pretty solid. Yeah. There, there's times in middle to end of February where you're driving in snow. Right. I mean, in ice. So yeah. I'm okay with this. Well, and I was talking to, talking to one of the farmers yesterday, and we were talking about the accumulation of, or the non-accumulation. And he just, he just felt like, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a dry, it's going to be a dry summer. Dry, win dry summer? Yeah, you just felt like that that was going to, they're not going to have the yield Snowpack. that they normally have unless, you know, he said unless, I mean, it could be that we could get some, you know, great showers in the spring, which would, would help. Yeah, it would be, I mean, how you could try to predict it right now, but you, you don't know what's going to happen in the spring. Well, right, right but, the, but the point is we just don't. I don't think we have the accumulation in the mountains. I know we don't, that we normally do. I mean, it seems like, who did we talk to the other day about it? And they said that it was like 60 or 70% of normal, you know. So, Donna. Adana, yeah, yeah. So, but 60 or 70% is not horrible, I don't think. I well, think. it's 60 or 70% of uh, normal. Of where it's supposed to be at that particular time of the year. Yeah, norm, of a no, during a normal year. Well, no, it's, average, but it's not the accumulation. It's like so then, so then, what if what percentage of the accumulation should we have at the end of February? And if it was ideal, it would be a hundred percent. Yeah, and we have sixty. Correct. Yeah, which is not horrible. I mean, it could be way worse than that. It yeah. could be ten. Well, and that would be. I don't. I don't know what is a bad year. I know. don't either. Yeah. Nope, you know, I mean, no I, I ask her. So when we had that flood, what was it? And she said, well, you know, it was like, you know, it was like 130%. So Todd, Todd answered how big a woman's basketball is. Of course he knows. Women's basketball size is one inch smaller in circumference. So if you think about that, yeah. an inch is a lot in circumference. I mean, it makes it quite a bit smaller. Yeah. You can definitely feel it when you're, like, shooting. It's lighter. It's just, it, it, it's different. But circumference is... The distance around. entirely around the ball. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah, it's quite a bit smaller. All right. Well, hey, I have some trivia for you this morning. This, Ooh, this yippee. is <laughs> This is this is American history trivia, but I tried to I'm pick I'm not things. a history dude. So yeah, you... I know, but these are things that I think and there are some of them some of them from the nineteen hundreds and some of them from two thousands. Okay, so uh, do you know what year American women were granted the right to vote? Oh, God. Maybe what time? <laughs> so, yeah. So, it, 19, 1920s. 
with the passage of the 19th Amendment. What, you're not even going to let me try? You're just going to read the answer? Well, I didn't think. Okay, so I'll let you try on this one. Okay. All right. You, what was the last state admitted to the Union? Last state? Uh, 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 Hawaii? Oh, ding, 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 ding. Okay, who was the first man on the moon? Neil Armstrong? Hey, there you go. Okay. All these other ones, these are up in the 2000s. All okay. Right. I might be able to get some of those. Yeah, you got two of those. Okay. I don't, maybe this. Okay, so what was in kind of a target year? What year did the Apple computer introduce the first iPod? iPod. That would have been like right around 2000. Yep, 2001. 2001. Okay. All right. I, I I remember there was these ones, these little teeny. Yeah, yeah. They iPod. called it the Nano. Yeah, and, and it had a little clip on it. Yeah. Could, I never had one. I had the. I always had. I never had the Apple version. I always had the, whatever else. Yeah, I know. Me was, too. I was like, I, I couldn't afford. I couldn't. Yeah, yeah, they were they were out of my price button. range. So, um, in fact, I remember the first time I ever. I got a used one, and it and it wasn't even because I bought it. I I bought some gear, and this little, the, this used one came with it. And I, I even then it was you know five or six years old, and I thought it was super cool. But it was, it was I've never even used one. It was like, beyond my well, I, and now everything's on your phone or yeah, you don't even or, have to dip, you know I, iTunes or uh, Spotify. It's just those they've changed the game. Everybody else. okay. Um, so why did former Vice President Al Gore win the Nobel Peace Prize? Gosh, I know this. I gotta think. I, I know he did something. He, yeah, he's involved in something. So he did a. You go ahead. No, he I'm did not a. Gonna. He did a film. It was his work on climate change education through the movie. An inconvenient truth. I didn't know about the okay, so so I did know about the climate change work, right? But I didn't know there was a movie. Yeah, but yeah. I I just couldn't think yeah. of what what it was that he was involved in. Okay, but I knew I knew Al Gore won a Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. Okay. And and all of that is controversial, but it doesn't matter anyhow. Yeah. Oh, uh, what type of exercise area did Barack Obama, President Barack Obama? have installed in the White That's House. easy. Basketball court. Come a on. basketball court, yeah. yeah. All right. Barack's a baller from Chicago. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, oh, this is interesting. Where is the geographical, and you won't know this, I won't know, I didn't know it either, but anyhow, where? what is the geographical center of the the U.S. population approximated in the 2020 consensus. The geographical center of the U.S. population. So is that like if you took the population and cut it in half and tried to find like where half of the people are in the United States? Yes, well, so it's... It's got to be somewhere on the, it, like it, before the Midwest. It says... most of the people are on the East Coast. Yeah, it says about nine miles outside of Hartsville, Missouri. So it is. It's, yeah, it, it, yeah kind of. Mo because most people are on. There, there's yeah. more people so on. So two thirds of the. Yeah. Of the U.S. Yeah, it takes two thirds of the U.S. to make up one third population wise. Correct. Correct. One hundred percent. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, and then the last one. Uh, who was the first woman to hold federal executive office in the United States? Federal executive office, and it's recent. Uh huh. Well, it's got to be one of those ladies that everybody always bitches about. <laughs> um, not Pelosi. She's current. She's current? Yeah. Is Pelosi current? Yes, but she's more, yeah. But she, but but she's not an exec. This is executive. Executive means the uh, presidential executive branch. Federal so. executive office. Oh, uh, Kamala. Yep. Yeah. Kamala Harris. So, so executive is like is like president, vice president. I think so. I think That's those it. two well, offices. Yeah. yeah. And then and then it goes. Ju what's that, what's in between executive and judicial? What's the one in the middle? Well, so there's executive and there's Congress. Yeah. What's what, it called? 
Congressional. Legislative. Legislative. Yeah. yeah okay. Executive. Legislative branch and the judicial branch. Yeah, that's it. Is that what it is? Legislative yeah. and then judicial. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what Benny said. So. Kamala. Kamala. All righty. Yeah. Mike. Mike Rudy says Dobbsy needs to be on Jeopardy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I wouldn't. I'm not. I'm not like that guy that won like 59 in a row or whatever. It was What's funny. I name? saw. He's the host now. Oh, he was the host. I saw an old Jeopardy clip on social media where they were asking the contestants, and then and this is when Alec, Alex, Alec Trebek. I can't. Remember. Anyhow, yeah, he Alex was still Trebek. alive. Yeah, and it was on football. They they had they had a category on football. And these were all the kinds of questions that if you watched football, you would know. And none of the panelists. Oh, I've seen it. I've any seen of the it. Answers. It's on social media. I've yeah. seen that. Clip. Yeah, I mean, it's just very. And funny. Every single one of those questions I knew, like. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. And these guys are like, uh. Yeah, no one. No but one. you ask them a question about molecular biology, and they're like, well, I'll take. You take a, <laughs> an atom and you split it in half and you add two tenths to a burner. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, so they, if they had a. Common Man's Jeopardy, I would enjoy that show. But I, you know, I mean, I've sat next to people who knew all of the answers. And, it, you know, I mean, so. It's, I used to do pretty good on Jeopardy with my grandma. She was impressed. Yeah. I, I used to impress. I mean, she wasn't my grandma. Impressing but, your grandma is not hard. Yeah. But um, <laughs> <laughs> last week I was sitting in a seating meeting for the, the tournament, the wrestling tournament, the CCC tournament. And. And Marco, one of the assistant coaches for EOU, he was writing up on the board, like, the names of the wrestlers. Uh -huh. And so he's standing, and I go, dang, Marco, you make a good Vanna. He had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> no clue. He's like, like, dude, Vanna White? You don't know who that is? He's like, no. I'm like, wow. Oh, man. Like, like Vanna's like four generations worth of people's part of their childhood. Right. You know, like, crush. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's so funny because... She, I mean, all she started out was just a model turning leather, leathers, yeah. you know. And then yeah. over a period of time, she became more and more part of the show. And She only missed like three shows in her whole career. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. Over like 40 some odd years. Well, and what's, what's funny is that, you know, at some point they, it used to be they would turn letters and now they just. Yeah, she just... They just light, yeah. Yeah, but, she doesn't even activate it. But, she just yeah, gets but there was a period of time it was like, well, we really don't need Vanna anymore. What are we going to do? And like, no, we got to have Vanna. She's yeah. part of the show. Yeah, she's still going to watch over and walk yeah. over and touch the panel. Yeah, and what else are 14-year-old boys supposed to do? <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't have that whole niche if, yeah. you, if you didn't have her. So. Well, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, and all those 14-year-old boys that are now 40. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, very true. Yeah, yeah, she was a huge part of that show. Yeah, well, you want to get us out of here? Yeah, it's going to be quick on this day too. Not a lot of things happened on uh, February twenty second, right? Twenty second. Mm -hmm. On this day in eighteen seventy six, John Hopkins University opened. Hmm. There is something very important that happened on this day, though, and it happened in nineteen. 80 BC, and it's one of the most important United States sports events ever, and it happened in 1980. 1980, yes. on this day, February 22nd. It was one of the biggest upsets in Olympic history. Where, where, was, it, where was it at? Where did it happen at? Lake Placid. It was one of the biggest upsets, upsets. in Olympic history. Huh. Did we did we win a bobsled a no. bobsled or yeah I can't. It remember. was the miracle on ice. Oh, that's right. The we hockey. beat the Russians. Yep. yep. Okay. Four to three, and wow. we went on to win the gold medal. I think we beat them in the semifinals, and then I mean we the, nobody had beat them in a long time. It was like it was, and we nobody was supposed to beat. That's them. right. It was kind of like Rulon's uh, right gold in the in the uh, in wrestling in, in two thousands. Like, yeah. Unexpected. Um, 2018, Neanderthals, not humans, were the first artists on Earth, producing red cave paintings 65,000 years ago in Spain, according to new research published in Science Magazine, which is a reputable magazine. I mean, they don't put stuff in there if, if it's not something that's, you know, diligently looked at. I, uh -huh. I looked it up because I... I I don't want to say something, you know, like that, and then have somebody think, oh, man, he's just making this up. No, I looked up Science Magazine. It's very reputable. Mm -hmm. And they don't just publish stuff that, you know, 
isn't possible yeah. or true. But can you imagine 65,000 years ago, Neanderthals painting on walls in caves? That's crazy. That is. Like, what were they painting? I want, <laughs> I want to know what they were painting. Probably what they saw, right? Right. They weren't, like, getting into these, like, abstract paintings of, you know what I mean? Like, flowers turning into chickens or anything, Well, and right? I, I mean, I... I mean, you know, those those hieroglyphics were kind of a historical. But they don't consider hieroglyphics art. Art? They no. don't? No, it's communication. Right. Okay. Like it's like writing the alphabet. So that, this is they're not, writing. They're just they're this just, is just drawing. straight up art, like huh. drawing pictures. You know what I mean? Not in the form of communication, because hieroglyphics are like communi- used for to tell what's happening. Right? right. Yeah. Like art is more just you know like. A picture of depicting what's going right. on or whatever you but know, i guess like, that's a good question like what sixty-five thousand years ago though i mean what stage were we at we were neanderthal just the brain being able to function at that you know what i mean like i'm trying to think of like what we were like sixty-five thousand years ago we couldn't have been too smart you know what i mean like I mean, for the time we were smart, right. but we weren't like not anywhere near as advanced as we are today. Obviously, yeah. I, I'm like trying to think: Did we use we used tools? Obviously, because we painted. Yeah, that's crazy. Number one song in America ten years ago today: "Dark Horse" by Katy Perry. And then the quote for the day: "Train yourself to let go of everything you fear to lose." One more time: "Train yourself to let go of everything you fear to lose." Boom. I'll be, cu- I'll be going live the next couple days. Uh, I'll get there tomorrow morning sometime, and uh, it, it's finals day. So semifinals and finals for LeGrand tomorrow, boys and girls. Um, I'm going to go live with Coach Azure from EOU Wrestling. We'll talk some wrestling. We'll probably go in the media room and just set up a camera and just BS for a little while, and then I'll try to get interviews with Clell and all the finalists for LeGrand and keep you guys updated on – What's going on with uh, the good old wrestling for the green? We're going for four for the boys. Um, it's a stretch, but and and a first one for the girls, which I don't think is a stretch at all. I think we're going to walk through that tournament. But wow. the boys for four. And I always thought it was three in a row, but I guess they're counting the COVID year. So it would be four. And four state champions in a, in a row in if a row. they got it. Yeah. And, and we're... I don't want to like. I don't want to c- curse us or you know like. What's the word? Jinx. Jinx us, but we're gonna break the the single season state champion record this year. The most ever for the grandest four. We're we're bringing back five individuals this year. Huh. So, I think. I mean, that's my personal. Uh, I think five individuals will walk out of there with the gold medal on Saturday, on Friday night. I do. Wow. And I don't know about girls. Uh, I don't know it as well because it's not as prevalent. Mm -hmm. So I haven't seen a lot of the girls, you know, like they don't have the same amount of matches here in town. I just don't know as much about the girls. But I do know that we have really tough girls and that have done really well. And I don't think there's a team 4A, 3A, 2A, 1A, which is the the group that we're in, that that can beat us. I really don't. So... Well, wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would be. And, and a, maybe a couple of individual champions for the girls, too. That would be now, sweet. have they have they had girls' state wrestling before? Yeah. this okay. is. I think this is the second year or third okay. year. Okay. Second. Second. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's the right. second year where it's been sanctioned. Right. I, I, I've never been there, though, when they run them at the same time. That's going to be crazy. This is, this is, this is, I thought it was crazy when it was just boys. Right. Cause there's, there's so, so many, many teams, right? Yeah, so many matches. You right. know what I mean? If you if you look at like just four A alone, each team's bringing anywhere from like ten, you know, to some teams have twenty guys, eighteen right. guys, and all those guys are wrestling in a double elimination. You know, you can wrestle back bracket all in the same building. <laughs> it's kind of wild. And there's like how many eight matches going at once I, or more? I, I want to say that the, the, there was eight last the last time I was there. Yeah, eight eight different mats, but there might even be more than that. See, I've never been to. I mean, a, the Mylenberg is the biggest tournament. Oh, I've that's ever been tiny to. compared right. to this. Yeah, this is like. But still, it was like it was mind-boggling to see, you know, 
10 mats or 12 mats going on all yeah. all the all the same time. This yeah. one, you, just bonkers. You, it, it must be more than eight mats because Meilenberg has six or eight. I, I don't remember how many, but just think about it's Memorial Coliseum. It's right. where the Blazers used to play. Right. It's huge. Huh. And and there's people. So like, you can sit up. Everybody gets tickets. It's it's expensive to go. I, my ex is. My ex had to buy tickets, you know, to go watch my son. She's telling me, I'm like, golly, I, I didn't know it cost that much because I don't have to pay and I get right. the best seats in the house. Right. I'll yeah. be right there on the mat. You know what I mean? Like, and, and so I don't know what that view is like, but being on the mat, you know, I know what that view is like. And yeah. it's, it's the, that's one of the reasons why I love taking pictures. <laughs> and you, and you said again, what was the name of the website that you use to track keep... wrestling? Everybody. Yeah. It's the, it's the only way if, if you want to follow, uh, anything wrestling in Oregon track wrestling, you just go, you go to events, you search OSAA mm -hmm. and it'll pop up state championship. You go in, you can follow just one team if you want to. So you could select the grand. And it'll show you all all the grand's matches when they are, you know, when they're coming up. And it's the only way to follow wrestling in Oregon, really. Or you, I mean, you can pay for Flow, which is their affiliate. They're part of that, and then you can watch the matches as well. And I think Flow's like twenty bucks a month or something. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. All righty. All right. Hey, thanks, Eastern Oregon, for yep. being here this morning. See and you on Tuesday. Yep. See you soon.